How does friction enables us to walk, run, and drive a car? In our last video on how friction arises, we learned that friction opposes relative motion, and we also learned the types of friction, and the formula for friction. With these concepts, and some thought processes, let's understand how friction enables us to walk, or drive a car. When we begin to walk, we first try to push the ground backwards. This attempts to create relative motion between our soul and the ground. Friction reacts to this by opposing the relative motion, which is by pushing us forward, thus providing a force in the forward direction, and enabling us to move forward. The friction which acts here is static friction, as there is no relative motion between our soul and the ground. As you know, the value of static friction is always less than or equal to the product of coefficient of static friction and the normal force. When the force by which we push the ground backwards is greater than the static friction, the static friction is no longer able to oppose the relative motion between our soul and the ground, as a result, we slip. Fortunately the impact was not great enough to break our bones, so you better know that slipping occurs when there is a relative motion between two surfaces. That's why when we step on ice or banana peel we often slip and fall, as the coefficient of friction is relatively less there. Or when we travel to another planet where the gravity is low, giving rise to less normal, for instance moon, where the gravity is 1 by 6th of that of Earth's, as we are used to push the ground as hard as back in Earth, we can easily slip in Moon. So be careful the next time you travel to Moon. Now let's understand how friction helps us to drive a car. To understand this, we should first start by understanding what is rolling. For example, let us take a rolling ball. We say the ball is purely rolling when there is no relative motion between the surface of the ball in contact and the floor at any instant of time. How does this happen? Interestingly friction makes this happen. When we push a ball, it starts off by sliding on the floor, giving rise to relative motion between the surfaces, and as always, friction tries to oppose this by providing a force in the opposite direction, which provides torque for the ball, thus resulting in its rotation. This frictional force also acts as an external force and slows down the velocity of the ball by Newton's second law of motion. The friction stops to act, once the ball starts to purely roll. So rolling is a combination of linear motion that is translation, and rotative motion, such that the velocity at the point of contact is zero. This occurs only when the velocity at the contact due to the rotation that is omega into r, is equal to the velocity of the center of the ball v, which is illustrated in the diagram shown. Now let us understand how this phenomenon of rolling occurs in the case of a car. In this case the relative motion between the tires and the road is brought about by the turning of the wheels which is driven by the engine. As the friction acts on the wheels it starts to roll. Consequently, friction reacts whenever the accelerator is pressed. So we can say that friction is what provides the acceleration for the movement of a car. If friction is not able to oppose the relative motion, the wheels start to skid or slide. So it is important to have wheels with high coefficient of friction, that's why wheels have treading. Friction also helps us to bring about a car to rest. I will leave it to yourself to think about that. With that we have learned how friction enables us to walk and drive a car. Thank you, meet you in the next video. If you want to learn more about friction, watch this video about how friction arises.